we are the best. Right, as we try to do our opening, I'm all right, we're going to jump right into it. Good life. evening, everyone. I'm making I a beautiful life. Thank you. I'm changing, I'm so, rearranging. So I feel a beautiful day. day. It's coming my way. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day. All right, all right, all right. Well, StreamYard has its own little feature on today. Wanted to do a, a different spin on our opening. And so I want to thank again, um, Pastor Jared Clark, who is joining us tonight for our special guest. And let me tell you, um, Pastor, how are you doing first? How are you, how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm feeling blessed. And I'm just thankful and grateful to be here. Thank you for the invite. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I know they are in for a treat because, you know, that tag team that you and your wife do, it, hey, it, it ain't for the faint at heart. But I love it because it's just so full of love and just love for God and love for God's people. And so I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Thank you for accepting our invitation. And so if you all are tuning in for the first time, I'm your host, Jaquita J.Q. Lee. And we definitely want you, our beautiful viewing audience, to be a part of those. So you can actually go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook so that we can see your comments and potentially your comment may be on the show. So this topic that we're doing tonight, and it's so interesting. I said, you you know, people sign up for certain things, Pastor Jared, but if they really, truly understood, you know, a lot of things, <laughs> you're going to be the first partaker. Um, when you when you do these types of things, you, when, you, when you do ministry, you know, when you do uh, these types of shows, you're going to be the first partaker because you have to bring this with authenticity and truth. And so, you know, right. here I am, Laura, send me. Right. And so it's it, this is a topic, Pastor um, Jared, that I was really very prayerful about um, actually who I would even have to do it. And it's just amazing of how he sh showed me your face. You know, and um, it was just interesting because today we're talking about church hurt or is it hurt feelings to stay or not to stay? That is the question. Um, so oftentimes, Pastor, when people experience what has been deemed or termed church hurt, oftentimes it is something that their first thought a lot of times is to leave. And so tonight I want to do a, a little spin. I want to actually do some twists to the show and probe a little more. Why do you feel that uh, oftentimes that is the first um, ch choice that people make, particularly when they have a fence or something happens in the church? Why do you feel that their thought process is to, well, I'm just going to leave? I, I believe it's because the the everybody come into church with their own expectation. I believe that everybody come looking for something. Um, I believe that some people come looking for problems and that's what they get. You know, I believe that if you look for a problem, you're going to find a problem. Um, I believe that those that come to the church that's actually looking for God will find God. However, we can't ignore the fact that 
there are um, some ministries out there, unfortunately, that, you know, it, it, the presence of God is not there. The spirit of the Lord is not there. And there, there's a lot of things that's taking place that just simply is, is uh, contrary to the word of God. Um, I think that people's uh, initial reaction to leave um, is just simply where, you know, because when people come to the church, you got to think of it. You know, uh, I know you may have and those that's watching may have heard the term that the church is oftentimes referred to as a hospital. Um, so people come in, they come sick. You know, I, I even recall my Myself coming in and you know I definitely wasn't nowhere near where I am now you know I, I you know I was laying everything out you know I came broken I came uh, a fornicator I came uh dealing with a suicide spirit I came with with, with, a, with a ton of problems and so th those that that took me in like the brothers and the sisters that I've seen um and was able to, to talk to you know the brotherhood that I was at I, I poured out a lot of my personal business that I wouldn't have poured out um I shared uh, very intimate uh conversations with a, with a lot of those brothers that you know I was expecting that hey you're gonna keep that there and not use that against me and sometimes you know uh some things that we share in secret gets uh, spread around the church and then it ended up coming out of the pulpit out of the pastor's mouth and so i think when when people uh initial uh responses to leave it's like man I, I didn't come here for that i came here because i thought this was going to be a safe haven for me and i think that a lot of people come you know with their hearts pure um for the most part that they're just coming really to to get themselves to you know to get themselves together to get themselves in alignment with god and um you know when when they're not able to really receive that it's like man i, I i'd rather not just do this do this here man when i'm dealing with all this fake stuff and I'm and I'm seeing people preach one thing and they doing another and they saying that they love me and they're not showing me that I'm not feeling that well I can just go on back into the world um you know where I wasn't where where I was you know where we just all heartless and cold hearted in the world so you know feeling like they can come in the church and they come in for one thing and then it turns out to not be uh what they what they expected when they came into the church I believe that that's one of the main things there And, and this this is why I think this conversation is so good, because we can be um, having been in the church. Right. We, we've seen a gamut of things that take place in the church and we see people come in broken. And for the most part, that that is, you know, most of all our testimonies for the most part um, that people are coming in broken. They are coming in with disappointments. But I, you said, I love the word that you said as far as the expectation and I, 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 you and I actually had an opportunity to talk about this through the show when you all came. And I definitely wanted to be able to have the conversation around because, yes, we've heard people say, you know, well, people still go to their jobs and they've been hurt on their jobs. You know, um, why is it different in the church? And I want to challenge our, our beautiful viewers on tonight to understand that it actually should be different in the church. We should not be experiencing everything that we experience on our jobs if this is a house of prayer if this is where the lord dwells and when right. what happens right. is if we're not intentional about making sure that the babes in christ see god and see the image of him through leadership and, and through the ministry it does hinder what the intentions are supposed to be and then on the gamut of that it is going to determine, um, you know, how active people become in a ministry when they see the interaction with the people already in the church. And so mm -hmm. wise counsel is very important. We have to make sure that we're not creating atmospheres in our church that are atmospheres in on our jobs because they're totally different. And that's really what I love. I, I, I want you to part there for a minute, Pastor, because I, I, I don't think that people fully understand that yes, every church is going to have its challenges, it's going to have its growing pains, it's going to have those areas, you know, that need to be worked upon because we are being perfect, not perfect, are being perfected. But talk a little more about really the significance behind understanding the role of the church, especially to with so much going on and it's so much division. Talk a little bit more about why it is we have to be um, preparing ourselves to be that church without spot or wrinkle because that's what he's coming back for. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, I love what you said there about the, uh, the, 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 the difference between the job and, uh, and how people, you know, they treat their job, they'll stay at their job and then they, they'll leave, but they'll want to leave the church. 
And uh, I wanted to hit on that just for a second before I jump into your question. Um, but, but because it, it, I think that it's, you know, when we, we go to our jobs, that's that's us. We're, we're around so many different people um, that, that you, we'll, be, we'll be around unbelievers um, and, and people that's carrying many different spirits. And, and uh, we're, we're, we've got to realize when we go into our place of work, we're, we're in the world. You know, so we're working around people that may not be saved. We're working around people that, that that has no respect for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, again, when we're when we're at church, that's why it's so important that we 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 do uh, uh, do not forsake the, the, the assembly of gathering around our brothers and sisters, because when we go to church, that's like our fill up. That's when we able to get the strength that we need to go out into the darkness. You know, churches where we we get that refill. We get that. That's the light there when we're around our brothers and sisters, because we all are like-minded but when we're going in our job we we stepping in there with the full armor of god on because we battle ready because you never know what you're going to face throughout your your, your day-to-day life so you know it should it should be it's definitely a difference you know because in church yes and, and i love when you said too people think that you know everywhere you go there, there's always going to be something. There's no such thing as the perfect church except for the church that God alone himself is perfecting. And then when the church is at that stage, then that's when he'll be returned. But but until then, that means right now, while we're still having these type of discussions and we're still um, um, talking about these things and, and, and really working on what we can do to make the body of Christ better. You know, this is what this is what has to be ironed out uh, before before uh, as we prepare ourselves for uh, our groom, which is the Lord Jesus Christ as he get ready to return so it's, it's so important i think that uh to get to the part about the developing um that church and to what we need to be we got to get back to what the scripture uh gives us as jesus taught what the greatest commandment is is that love you know a lot of people make it seem as if it's it, you know they come up with all these different uh, uh theologies and exegesis and it's, it's not that you know really what it is is it's getting back to love you know and first of all being able to get back to our first love you know uh, we've, we've been in a revival pretty much since uh saturday and, and i've been pumped and i and i got to hear some of my brothers speak about getting back to our first love but if you read in the book of romans i believe it's the 13th chapter somewhere along in there it lets us know that the law was fulfilled through love if jesus jesus went on the cross and was able to die for us he did that out of love, the suffering, being spat on, being whipped and having his flesh torn apart. He did that. All that was out of love. And the Bible, how does the Bible uh, 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 describe love? Love is patient. Love is kind. Uh, it, it's not self-seeking. Love keep no record of wrongs. That's my favorite part of how it describes love. It keep no record of wrongs. And I think that when we walk around uh, uh, with, with holding on the, that hate and feeling like we're entitled to do it because of whatever we feel had, the, the offense was done to us, we got to re- we got to realize that this Bible is a mirror for us, that when we walk in in perfect love, that means we, we letting it go. Be like frozen. Let it go. Let it go. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's all about us being able to give unto others what God has given to us. And so God is patient towards us. God is merciful towards us. He gives us uh, love and grace and mercy as the scripture even declares it and do us forever. And that's what we should be seeking to become like we seeking to become more like Christ, not our own definition of what we think being and saved is uh, our own definition of what we think how we should be able to interact in these situations and it's that perfect love that that and not just love is that unconditional love because th- there's many different types of love but that unconditional love that that love that goes beyond when we become a church like that that means that to the, to the sister that's coming in that that's a prostitute and all she got to wear is a short skirt then we'll be more open to receiving her you know why because when we're operating in unconditional love love don't see that love see i'm so glad that you're here i'm glad that you're safe and i'm glad that you was able to make it in this house love don't see that young boy that come with them dreads in his head and and he coming with the gold teeth in his mouth it's not seeing oh you just a thug you can't came off the corner. No, love's going to say, I'm so glad you here, my brother. I love you. You know, God, God, I'm so glad that you here. Oh my goodness. You know, we love on them. We build them. We speak life into them and, and, and perfect love allow us to not look through a critical spirit. But, the, and that's what, that's the problem. We got too many brothers and sisters that's in the church and they're, they're looking at men and women uh, through a critical spirit. When you view anybody through a critical spirit, you're always going to find a fault in them. And, and, and again, it's, it's, it's you got to realize is that, you know, we all have been there. We got to come back and look at ourselves. How how was our process to get to where we are? And, and what, what are we still dealing with? 
if, if, if we're honest, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of things and we have to realize that we have to be considerate with ourselves. The Bible said that you ought to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you got to realize that, you, you know, you don't see nobody walking around just slapping themselves, hitting themselves. You know, we take care of ourselves. We groom ourselves. We make sure we, you know, keep our, you know, keep our hair cut, keep ourselves well groomed. So same thing when it comes to the spirit. If, if we're walking in that, that perfect love, then we're going to have that compassion towards other people, especially when we know that, that God delivered us out of some places where we probably don't even some of y'all probably don't even want to testify some of the things that you 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 did because you you know you feel ashamed about what you used to do Let, let's be honest because some people testify certain parts but they don't want to touch on certain things you know and then and then once god bring them from that place they act like they was never there before because they want to forget about certain things in their mind so we got to realize when people come from these places we always got to that's why the bible say humble yourself Humble yourself. It takes humility to be able to minister unto a soul, you know, knowing that God was patient towards us and he loved us. And, you know, did, did we always get it right? I know. Listen, if, if any of my uh, leaders that I sat under watching, they'll tell you I was hard headed. You know, they warned me. The Lord gave them visions and I still went out and bumped my head just out of ignorance, you know, and some things I just did simply deliberately. So how dare me being a pastor now get somebody that come in and because they don't follow my instruction, I get mad at them and I get Get impatient with them and I say I'm washing my hands with them and I'm done with them Christ didn't wash his hands with me and I don't believe that nobody Amen. in the body of Christ should be washing their hands with, with any of God's people <laughs> oh well, all right well all right listen um th this is why conversations like this is so important because it it this show is always going to challenge us um challenge us to really grow in God and and you know uh really operate from that fruit of the spirit. And so when you understand to be able to do that, it is not our flesh that's going to be able to do that. It's our spirit. And so the more and more that we're having these conversations, the more and more that we're holding one another accountable and you're being around people who are walking this out, that's what you will tend to walk out. And I want to, I want to segue um, with the conversation in understanding people can come in Yes, with expectations, but there can also be because of the residue. And it's so interesting. Um, there was a song that was introduced to me over the weekend. Uh, Jason Nelson residue It's called residue, but, but the song speaks of there being no residue, like the fact that he can wash us. He can wash us, wash us to a place where there is no residue. And <clears throat> excuse me, as people are transitioning and getting to that place, it's very important to understand what this topic was about, because we said church hurt versus hurt feelings. There are times where people can be corrected, right? Mm -hmm. And that correction, because it is not in line with what they wanted, Satan will use it as the book of Satan, um, bait, of, bait of Satan. He will use that offense to be able to create that wedge, to be able to get that person out of where they're actually stationed by the Lord. And so I, I wasn't sure how transparent I was going to be tonight, but it's very interesting because there was something that happened and it was so a few years back it was so over the top that it had me make a decision to literally leave during the service, text my pastor, and say I'm done. And I'm actually the one who transcribes for him. And I could rem I could remember it so when I tell you, Pastor, I can remember it so vividly because it was like the Lord saying, you leaving will be out of your decision, not mine, because that's where I sent your raven. And so when I had an opportunity to just kind of like <laughs> go back and, you know, go before the Lord and say, God, at the end of the day, it's not my will, it's yours. At the end of the day, you know. The, it was so over the top crazy of what happened that it had to be that you were gutting something out of me versus me looking at what the person did. And um, like I said, I wasn't sure if I was going to go in and just share that tonight, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be really transparent because what tends to happen is because the enemy wants to get you out of position, when something is so over the top, you have to really begin to look at that with your spiritual eyes. Because it's the very thing that God is saying, I know how you would have responded in the past. I'm going to allow this thing to happen for you to see where you are growth wise. And when I tell you, when I when I came back 
and came to myself like that prodigal son, you know, when I came back, I understood that it wasn't even about God, get them. It wasn't about vengeance. It wasn't about anything. It was about what he was gutting out of me because it was not in me until he put it in me to just let the thing slide or not say anything. And when I tell you we're looking for these houses and cars, but I'm talking about the miracle of God taking your attitude, the miracle of God taming your tongue. Like those are the things that I think that we actually slight. Like in a time where people say anything, do anything, and God is giving us self-control, he's giving us peace, he's giving us joy in a, in, a, in a world full of turmoil. Talk a little bit, Pastor, about that process that's so very important for people to understand when God is using you and when God is actually um, maturing you. There are going to be times where it's not so much about the church hurt part per se, but your feelings were hurt. And so he wants you to be able to process that correctly. Listen, I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And it's, it's uh, you know, when you think about the, 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 the fact that uh, so many people are quick to uh, be offended, I believe that offense is a choice. Um, when it when it comes to us facing adversity is because that's what it is. Um, God, like you said, I agree that that God is, is doing something within us. He's 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 working within us to uh, pull us out of that, to, to get us to where to, that's part of the perfection is when we're going through things um, that that we just simply uh, are wondering, why am I going through this? You know, uh, you know, why, why, why am I feeling like, uh, you know, I got to deal with this or I'd rather leave. And, and um, I was, I was reading a book. I, I can't uh, remember where, where it was exactly, but it was saying that the, the first thing that we should do when we're faced with adversity, it shouldn't be our first response to adversity shouldn't be to leave because of it. It should be to embrace adversity. And uh, I'm reminded of the scripture where we like to quote all the time in the church, Romans eight and 28, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And we say these things and we got to realize that these situations that we're in where we, you know, where it may be tough. And I'm speaking from the experience of church hurt. I'm speaking uh, from the experience. I'm going to get transparent. I'm, you know, y'all, anybody that follow me know I, I preach the butt naked gospel. That's what I call it because it's raw, uncut and unadulterated and simple you got to realize and understand I'm, I'm a I'm a victim of uh, of church hurt but then I, I can't just play victim I also uh have uh probably placed some some hurt on on people within the church as well um but but being one that that had people bash me from the pulpit and say things like you know you can't kill nothing that won't nothing die and and you won't d d d you know just going in in front of everybody within the uh the, the church and being a victim of that you know what, what what it did in my experience in that I didn't uh, let that break me down. I said, Lord, I, I pray. And these were my words verbatim. I said, God, you never hurt me. Uh, you you never did anything to me. You never got up in the pulpit and bashed me. That was what that was the actions of your people. And I said, Lord, I, I will not run away from you because of what people uh, uh, did to misrepresent you. And that's the that's the thing. What do you come for? You know, when you step into the church, are you here to serve the Lord or are you here to serve your pastor? You know, yeah, I love my pastor. Yeah, I love my brothers. Yeah, I love my wife. But at the end of the day, just me loving, just for example, I'm married. Me loving my wife solely, that's not enough for me to be the man that that will make her happy as a husband should be that's not a love my, my love for her solely that's not enough you, you want to know why because because there are certain things that i face even when i'm not around my wife that 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 i would use a, if i was just a regular old man and wasn't being led of the spirit or if i was to stop praying and uh, being led of the holy ghost that, that i would probably fall into certain temptations but it's because of my love for god not because you know it's not even more so because uh oh my wife no it's because no i'm not gonna let god down i know what God's word say. And so that's what we have to keep on the forefront. It's not about how people uh, interact because if we're controlled by the actions of people, oh man, we, we'll be as the scripture says, a double-minded man. And a double-minded man is unstable and not some, but all of his ways. And I think that's the issue with the church now is that we're coming for the wrong things. We're, we're so quick to blame somebody for it. I, I, I work in, 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 in the jail and, you know, people that's, uh, 
accused of many different things. And in that environment, you you would get people that's, you know, it's always somebody else fault why they're in there and people don't take the responsibility for themselves. And even when we're, we're we may be in a situation where we're facing church hurt, I had to go through my church hurt. You know why? Because because what I went through is one of the reasons why I believe that the Lord allowed you to uh, call upon me to even speak on this subject, because how can you speak on something if you never went through it? I don't want to hear nothing. It's, it's, it's totally different when you when you have actually experienced that and you went through that. I'm a victim of it, but I'm gonna let you know I'm also a survivor of it. And anybody watching on tonight that you can be a survivor of it. You just got to realize and get your priority in order. If you keep God in his rightful place, no matter what man does. You, you, you won't you won't never be surprised by anything that man do. You want to know why? Because man is imperfect. I think part of the problem is we're, we're searching for perfect love and imperfect people. And then when we don't get that perfect love from these imperfect people, we want to blame God, who's a perfect God, whose love never changes, who's the same okay. yesterday, today and forever. And when we realize and understand that he's the one that we need to keep up here, that he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And that's not just talking finances, but that's providing that love that we need, that comfort that we need. That, you know, you need somebody to pillow to talk with instead of going to that man that woman that liquor bottle whatever else your vice may be you going you going on your knees and you praying to the lord crying your pillow to the lord that's many nights that i had to do that but you got to make up in your mind that whatever i go through lord i'm going to serve you and knowing that that these things don't come to uh, uh break you at all even when you facing it because I love the topic, JQ. I'm, I'm just, I'm just so stirred up tonight. But, I, but I, I love the part where it said that you know, is, is it, is it to leave or is it to stay? You, you, mm -hmm. I believe that you stay there until you hear what God say. Why? The Bible says that if we, you are to acknowledge God in all of your ways, and He will direct your paths. Plural, not just singular, not, not one way, not just in that situation notice it says he direct your path so that means what you're going through now not only it, it don't just affect the next uh the uh, move that you may make but it also affects the moves that you will make in your future that's why it's so on, key man. that you put two in your ear into the mouth of god and that you hear him concerning should i leave or should i go because i had to stay in that and i endured it i wanted the lord to pull me out of it but i had to stay some of us we jump out the pot prematurely and then when we get on the plate we, we ain't ready you know because we didn't allow our ourselves to really go through what God was using and, you know, and, and what he was uh, using it for. And we got to know that God has us, God protects us. And, and, and my thing is, is we talk about church hurt all the hurt all the time, but I never hear anybody talk about how Jesus was the most hurt by the church altogether. It was the religious oh, wow. Sadducees and Pharisees that persecuted him. It was the church that denied him and say, who Jesus, I don't know him. And they ate with him. They, they supped with him. He healed them. Huh? He prayed for their children, their families. He, he, he helped them and blessed them, fed them, all these things. And yet they, they, they put thorns through his head, through his skull. They beat him and ripped his flesh. Huh? They, they pierced his side. This is what they did. They nailed him. And, and we and we got the nerve to say that and feel as if we we so entitled that, that, that we got to get through it. No. The Bible said that no servant is above his master. Who's the chief shepherd of the church? The chief shepherd is Jesus Christ. And we're no, none of us or ever will ever be above him. He went through it. And who are we seeking to be like every day? We're seeking to be like Jesus Christ. You know, we, we can't be carnal and spiritual at the same time. You got to pick which one you're going to be. But you can't be carnal minded and, and, and think you're going to try to uh, serve God in that. And, you know, as soon as somebody say something to you wrong, you want to knock if you buck and put the dupes up. No, that's a that's a carnal response that that does not bring glory to God in any type of way. But but turning the other cheek. Now, that's gangsta. That right there. Now that's real. And that's what God is looking for us to, to do. You see, anybody can swing on somebody and cause conflict. And let's be honest, a lot of y'all do a lot of swinging. And then as soon as that person start coming back, you don't win the fight no way. So what you what you jumping on somebody for? So, when you, when you, you know, when we when we bring this thing back and we got to realize that it's a spiritual fight and that all these things, there's a scripture that says that we are to consider it pure joy. When you face trials of many kinds, because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And, and that's in one version. But in the King James, the, the word that it uses is patience. That's what God wanted to teach us right there. Patience, because when we have that right there, we'll know that even even in our afflictions, that God is still working, that God is using it for his glory in the near future. God bless you. Let me tell you. A part of the conversation and as, as you were talking about the question that that latter part of our question with to stay or not, or or to not to stay 
And as you talked about, you know, your testimony of actually sitting there, you know, actually hearing things from the pulpit, knowing that it was directed to you, but sitting there and then going in to talk about, but how much more our savior. One of the powerful things in reference to that last statement that you went into was who are we following? Who is the example? Because we want best of the best in everything. We want the best job. You know, we want the best life. We want the best. We want to live in the best areas. But we have the best savior who has an example of a role model for us that is second to none. And yet we continue to place our hearts and our eyes and our mind on people versus the one who walked this out perfectly. And I really want to have be able to have that conversation tonight, brother, where we are putting ourselves on the line in reference to, well, what's in me that gets so quickly offended? What's in me that can just walk away or, or, or you know, um, say that, that, is, that it's over because we had a disagreement? What's in me? Because when you look at his example, like you said, he was spat on, he was beaten. You know, he he was denied, yet none of those things made him say, I'm going to get off this cross. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about the cross that we are supposed to have and the denial that we're supposed to do every day of self, it really is on the believer to get off of the milk and begin to pursue and seek the meat. Because we're living in a time where we will not be all of what we're supposed to be in the world in reference to being a light if we're constantly focusing in on things that are distractions, things that are, are intended to divide the church. If we cannot see how important it is that we address offense, we will continue to be divided and therefore be a church without power. And so I wanted to go into that to talk to talk about that a little bit, Pastor, of Talk about the impact that it has on a ministry when we are such a house divided and um, offense has taken on such a huge role in the hearts of man. Talk about that impact that it actually has on the church. It affects the number one thing that every church is supposed to have and be operating in. It goes back to what I said, that 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 unconditional, that perfect love that God has. So when you have chaos in, in the in the atmosphere, when you got, you know, clicks within the church uh, where where this group of brothers don't fellowship with this group of brothers or this group of sisters uh, don't fellowship with this sister because they used to hang out. But then something got in between. So now. Sister, sister uh, Jane Doe and Sally Doe don't talk to each other. So now they done separated in the church. So then now when you get a, a, a new newcomer coming into the church, don't know nothing about anything. But yet she she decides to to be friends and, and be friend of uh, one sister. And that sister is, is, is beefing with the other sister. And now now we got confusion and chaos in the church with people that had nothing to do with it. So then now on, it, it begins to, to spread a war that that. And then now you're, you're bringing up you're bringing in people that had nothing to do with it from the get go. And, and, and a lot of that happens is because people are not following Bible protocol and what was what's bible protocol biblical pro protocol that's it the bible says that if you have a art against your brother your sister in other words just come to them and talk and, and instead of the church operating in the in the spirit of maturity grow up that's what I, that's what I, that's what i say to a lot of you because a, a lot of us we have issues with people because we just simply won't pick up the phone and call them you know, and, and, and um, a lot of that and, and, and we got to do. That's what we got to do, because I, I, I personally I'm even talking even even in, in situation I'm in. I got a brother that went and, and, and blocked me online, blocked me on Facebook, blocked my number just all of a sudden out of the blue. I'm like, well, what what happened? You know, I, I said uh, I would have respected it more. Hey, man, all you got to do. And to this day, I, I'm praying like, Lord, if it's your will. See, that's another thing. Is it, it is it his will? Maybe, you know, it, maybe it was a reason why it happened. Sometimes you never know. But. I'm, I'm mature enough to say, hey, look, if you got a problem, hey, just come come to me. You know, let, let's talk it out. Because, again, we we all work for the same king. We're building God's kingdom, not 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 our own agenda. And I think that's what some people uh, 
that that's what some people don't really want to deal with and and, and they forget is that we're all one body so then you know if 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 i cut off my left arm that will affect my body that's going to affect how it's going to be able to function i need every piece of it no my 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 ear don't function like my 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 foot but i need it all to be functioning together because it creates what we call the body and for it to function the way that god intends for it to function it all needs to be on one accord and so instead of us um being so easily to get offended and we'll pick up the phone and call everybody except for the person that we really got the art with or at least we think about. So we so it end up when we bring other people into the picture, then guess what it does? You call something that might have been just like this. Now you don't open it up to something like this. And now it's spreading in the church. So then now when the spirit of God is moving in the in, in the house, you're you're messing with the love. You're messing with people's deliverance. You're messing with some you messing with someone being able to get what they need from God. And God don't take that lightly. And see, and, and I don't think people think about that. God don't take that lightly. You know, you, you're you it, it, grow up. That, that's the biggest thing. Grow up and mature, you know, because at the end of the day, when people are coming into the church, no matter if you are, if you are usher at the door your hello your good morning that's ministry right there that ministers to a soul even before the pastor get an opportunity to even talk to them and preach to them through the pulpit because really if they come in the door and you don't say nothing you don't you don't greet them they don't feel welcome they're probably uh 10 times out of 10 they're going to walk out of the church before the pastor even get up and be able to speak so that's why everything must flow whatever we do in church we got to do it in excellence and we got to be real to say lord what what is in me like I said, we've been in revival all week. Last night, it was it was it was crazy that the spirit of the Lord hit us. And you had pastors, you had leaders in the church at the altar last night on their knees. No, but they was at their knees saying, Lord, if, if there's anything in me, Lord, Please, anything on. in me. Lord, take it out of me. Search me, oh God, because I think that's what creates a, a, the, the, the church that God is looking for without a spot or a wrinkle. When we get the attitude that I'm going to take the plank out of my own eye, hope you ain't got to tell me it's in mine. Let me get this crust out my eye. Let me get it out my own eye. Then, hey, my brother, then I'll be able to help you. And I'm going to help you effectively because, hold on, I know what it's like. Look, 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 come here. You got to be gentle because, look, because if you do this right here now, that, that, that'll hurt you. Look, let me let me do it. Let me help you out with that. We got to be gentle. I, I, the Bible says he that win his souls is wise. We got to right. we got to approach this thing with wisdom. And we got to treat others like we treat ourselves. You know, if, if, if you hurt and you afflicted, listen, you, you, you're not going to just treat yourself. You ain't going to pull it. Just pull it out. But you're going to be gentle and ease it out. You're going to find a way to, to do it to resolve the issue so again i think it goes back to us just being mature enough to just say you know what let, let, let's have this conversation you know let's sit down and, and and have these difficult talks because obviously it's so it's so difficult for people but then that's a that, that's a whole nother topic because then now you have a church full of people that come from many different backgrounds so some people come where they don't have a, a, a healthy conflict resolution uh when it comes to dealing with conflict in, uh, in life some people come from the only thing that they know is we throw blows when, when i'm offended you know or you hurt you, you hurt my feelings we throw blows you know you say something or i feel like you know you out of pocket we throwing blows we not we ain't talking nothing uh about it so then now you got all this mixed in the church because that, let's be honest god's still working on a lot of people god's still working on some of these attitudes god's still working on uh, uh, uh on, on these things that that's that's uh, on a lot of us that, that that's causing a lot of that confusion and but that that's what's giving leeway to the enemy uh in the church and then that makes it harder on the preacher to go forth and do what he or she needs to do uh when, when ministering to the people because it creates a force within the church that should be flowing on one accord and uh yeah that's my that's my take on that and and that's a that's an awesome segue to where i want to go next in reference to the leadership what is the role of the leadership in fostering that unity of the brethren feed the flock love on the flock and the main thing remember that you are not the spiritual police in other words the bible tells every leader to not lord over God's people. Remember that the people that you are serving, if any pastors are watching, ministers are watching, e even if you're not even uh, a pastor per se over a church, just understand, know that the people that you encounter and you deal with, they're God's people, not your people. And 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 uh, I think that's the biggest thing that we have with what church hurt comes from because uh, a lot of preachers that, that have these titles, uh, they they think that they're they can lord over God's people. Uh, for example, uh, wh where are you going? 
you know, what you're doing. Let us know that. Don't go, don't go to this church and don't do that. And it's all these rules that are set in place that this stuff is not biblical. And at the end of the day, when you when you think about it, it's, it's, it's just feed them the word, give them the truth, be there for them to love on them. Because I don't believe in, in, in lording over God's people, because at the end of the day, God didn't he don't he don't come in and make us do anything. Serving God is not a dictatorship. It's a it's a choice and it's a relationship that we have to choose to to to, to nurture and build each and every day. So when it when it comes to uh, pastoring, we got to realize that we are to love people. Love them. And what I mean, love them, that don't mean that, oh, I done gave them. I done heard pastor say stuff like, I, I done told them so many times. I'm just I'm just through with it. But th that's not the attitude that a shepherd should have it, it, because we, we need that. It goes back to love. Love them. Don't lord over them. And they're, they're God's people and not your people. And, and, and what I mean by that is, is they belong to the Lord. So we as a, as a pastor, my job is to make sure I don't care if you come back 50 times. I'm still believing maybe that 50th time that the Lord would do something different in you where you will make a different choice the next time around. You know, keep coming because that's the that's how God is towards us. The Bible says his mercy endure forever. He, he he, he is not want his not is not God's will or desire for it that any should perish, but he want all to come to repentance. And if we say that we love God, if we say that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus, then that should be our exact desire for, for the men and women that we encounter. Not 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 to give up uh spirit and oh we, we give them three strikes and they out. God didn't give us three strikes, so we out or however many numbers you want to give somebody if they want to come back let them come if, if, if they come in the prayer line 50 11 times at least they come in for prayer you know like like understand and know i think that, like again it goes back to the uh, what we're saying that the question is is the role of the leadership love them and remember that they are not your people they're god's people don't lord over them don't don't put uh anything on them or ask anything of them that is not biblical you know and, and, and that's the main thing don't lord over god's people understand that that you are there to shepherd them that means you're, you're there to nurture the flock care for them be there for them pray with them and, and and let and leave them in the lord's hands because the lord is the one that that's his spirit is omnipresent not the pastors i'm not there when, when they're home and and when they're doing various things i'm not there but god is there and that's what that, that the job of the pastor is to uh pull them and, and lead them into a place where they can develop a relationship uh with the lord uh for themselves and and that that's what that's my desire is for people to uh have a relationship for themselves because they're not going to always be able to uh contact uh, me or contact their, their, their pastor. There's sometimes there's some battles that they're going to have to go through that God want them to learn learn that He is Lord, not not the pastor, not the pastor's mm -hmm. advice, but God want to mature them. And as you mature, you know, you think about a baby. A baby, you know, gonna have to be fed so much, and then over time that baby begin to be able to eat and, and pick up that spoon uh, by, by by his or herself and begin to feed themselves. And that's where we got to be, where we don't just have to run the pastor no more. We can start picking up our Bible for ourselves and praying for ourselves. And didn't ask other people to touch and agree, but, but but we ain't in that stage where everything gotta be fed and we blowing the, like like we about to uh, lose our minds every time we face something. So that that that's that's yeah. there again. It's just being careful. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's I think it's very very important um, because a lot of times what we're asking of pastors, I, I think that we have put them in sometimes in a category where we want them to have to deal or address everything that's happening in, in, in the church. And I, I love the passage of scripture that talks about even the role of the deacons and how they were selected and how godly they needed to be in order to have the church day-to-day uh, -day activities go forth. I think when you're talking about pastoring, I love when you said feed them because what God does through the word, people don't always have to tap you on your shoulder. Like there are times where I'm leaving church with crutches because that word stepped so hard on my toe, pastor didn't have to say anything, you know? And so at the end of the day, churches can go through these growing pains, but pastors have to really maintain that steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the words of the Lord. It's like knowing that what you're doing is not in vain. When you bring that word, it's the word that's going to change people. It's God that is going to be able to touch their hearts. And I think there's often times where, you know, we, 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 under, we understand scripture says so one will, will water, another will plant. He, but it's God who gives the increase. 
it's going to be God that touches an individual's heart. And I, and I, you know, I, I love some of the comments that I'm seeing, you know, as Mickey began to make mention that this is a must topic, you know, and this is what I want to park on what she says, that no one wants to talk about the process. See, we're living in this instant gratification, microwave society, like we're actually standing in front of the microwave because it, that's taking too long, you know. But when you understand the processing of God, the processing of God is more like a crock pot than it is a microwave. We've got to be able to mature in areas where, like you said, it's, it's about that, that looking at self, that how much of a mirror the Bible is to us. And I want to go here as, as we begin to wrap up, because even if, if people are going to be real honest, brother, even before the pandemic, people it was a mass exodus happening with the church. But since the pandemic, I mean, <laughs> that 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 um, bedside Baptist has been <laughs> real heavy for a lot of people, you know, pandemic and in, for various reasons as to people leaving the church. But I want you to talk a little bit as, as we begin to wrap up about the significance of Hebrews 10 and 25 of us not forsaking the assemblies, because there I don't care what anybody says, Pastor. There is something about being in the house of the Lord and there is something about the saints being on one accord where I'm telling you, I've seen God move on several occasions when when we're all on one accord. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing now, you know, with so many people making the decision to leave church um, and 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 bring that into the scope of Hebrews 10 and 25. Well, you got to, to realize that the pandemic, it, it, it exposed a lot of um, the real from the fake, uh, you know, as the scripture would say, the, the, the wheat from the tear. Because at the end of the day, you know, regardless to what, you know, a lot of us like I myself and my wife and, and you and, and your church family, um, everyone across, everyone all over the world. Um, I even was talking to a brother and um, I think he's in the he's in New Zealand. And um, we were talking and he was telling me how uh, the pandemic was hit over there. And this is just a few months ago. He was saying that there was still quarantine, um, how he was everything was shut down and it was only allowing for certain workers to uh, uh, travel and, and go out. And then they had to get back to the to, to the house. And he was talking to me about the same topic. You know, he was like, how is it over there in, in, in Georgia where you are? And, and uh, it really it really exposes uh, those that really had prayer lives those that were really going into the house of the Lord to get something from the Lord and to build and to be stronger in the Lord. And I believe that those are the people, those are the men and women of God that's still standing even after the pandemic. Um, I've seen it from both sides. Um, I've seen one church that they're still going heavy online, but they, they went and um, they had this, they got this conference call where they've been on it every night uh, uh pastor testified that they uh since the pandemic which was in 2020 uh they didn't miss not one uh conference call uh don't they, they only missed one and he said that was a uh, thanksgiving uh, in 2020 since then they was on every day uh, and, and, and people was actually showing up. Now they also testified to some people that fell off and, 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 and didn't go. But I believe that those that have a hunger and a desire to serve the Lord, like even, even though we're not in a building right now, we're fellowshipping right now. You know, this mm -hmm. right here is, is, is helping sharp Like as the Bible say, iron sharpening iron right now, it's taking place right now. We're fellowshipping, right. even being on here. And we also got other believers on now, right. granted, I, I understand what it's like being in that place, but what I'm saying is that those that are truly hungry because at the end of the day you said that god you said earlier i love when you said you said that god said he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle so those that's that's leaving i pray that that that, that they get they find uh the, the, the true encounter with God and they come on back to the church, you know, and I don't believe that everybody that left that they came to, you know, seeking God for the wrong reasons. I believe that sometimes I believe some, some people, the church had a lot of mess going on before the pandemic, too. And I believe some of it, God is is, is weaving his way through as he's perfecting his church. And, and uh, I believe truly that some people have fell in love. They fell in love and, and, and got the love from they met church people before they had a chance to meet God. And that's why they're now disgusted with the church. And so that's why some of them had left but I, I i really pray for those people that left and and that was really sincere and that was really genuine and they didn't get uh really what they were really 
truly had their heart set on getting and that was a true relationship with the Lord because I've been in that place too and I was like you know what but but when I pray and, and there are churches out there and I know you know every time you look around it looked like a pastor is getting exposed it looked like you know this church got this going on this church got that going on they they bringing worldly things into the church now but there are still churches out here that are Holy Ghost filled that are still preaching Come the on. truth of the gospel on, and that if you really Come want on. the truth of the gospel all you got to do is say lead me Lord and the Lord will lead you into a place where you won't go and there won't be no lordship listen I'm, I'm gonna even testify of my recent encounter me and my family we just we just joined the church we just joined the church here uh right here in Savannah and I had my issues because of my hurt and my uh, and, and the things that I dealt with with leaders and things of that nature when I tell you that everything that I I, I had that but that grudge that that, that wall up uh, that, man when when I met the pastor the first thing came out of his mouth is here I don't lord over God's people he starts speaking everything that I that that I said I would not want a for a leader. He starts talking how you know we don't do religion here. We stick with Bible. Anybody anybody that know me, I'm, I'm a stickler for what that Bible says. If it ain't in the Bible, I don't believe it. If it ain't in the Bible, I'm not gonna preach it. And and, and to 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 go into a place where you know the presence of God is at. And, and, and I want I'm saying that to get to give y'all to give y'all hope that don't give up. Uh, on 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 uh, church and, and God simply because you encountered the wrong church because you, you didn't give yes, up sir. on relationships when you encountered that man that broke your heart and left you bruised and that woman that and broke your heart and left you bruised you just kept you kept you 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 moved on and, and you eventually found that one that that accepted you so just because you know you might have had some bad experiences or some bad encounters don't treat church like that don't I, I don't know why people just throw away and so quick to do away with God he's not like that with you when you meet God God is gonna love on you God to send you to a place where you got genuine brothers and sisters that will really touch and agree and really pray with you and be there for you and not only the way they meet your spiritual need but they'll meet your natural need if, if you if you really in need and you really i believe god god will do that so don't give up on on the lord and yeah. the, the i want to touch you said that the, the next thing i wanted to kind of bring this tie it all in sis like i say i'm full and i'm just excited but um you <laughs> know like the, like you said that the, the mass exodus that's coming i believe but, but besides those that 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 did leave because they really did encounter some some church hurt i believe that god is just doing simply doing a cleansing for those that, that just want to be entertainers in the church you know getting up there and 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 uh you know no they they, they singing because they got a voice so they they, they just been pretty much being pimped but that but they wasn't living mm -hmm. nothing uh beyond the scenes and as you see god is god is revealing all he's you're starting to see people get exposed like never before now yeah. but god, that's part that's but in other words it's like it's like hey pick a boo i see you and i've been seeing you I, i've given you opportunity to get it right but but you know you continue to still want to play you you still preaching and yet you you fornicating afterwards you still preaching and you know you marry but yet you you flying this and and, and going this place to sleep up and, and and hotels with men so so now i gotta pull the i gotta i gotta unveil you now because because i can't allow you to spew this over my people and so and, and that's how serious god takes it you know, it, it, it'll be it, it'll, if you're going to be whatever you're going to be, be that. But don't don't be spewing over God's people and misrepresenting and giving and giving uh, the body of Christ a black eye because you just simply want to do what you want to do. You know, and even after some of these uh, preachers get 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 caught up in what they get caught up in, they don't even, they still don't keep it real. You know, it, they, they still don't say even being caught red handed. Some of them get caught on tape. Some of them already exposed. And, and, and they just they, they just don't be real to say, you know what? That was me. That wasn't God. You know, or I, just just step down, move out of the way, you know, because because it's so critical. The time we're living in right now, it is truly I know many people say, well, we done heard this for years. But no, we're truly living in the last days. And as every second go on, we're getting closer to crisis return. And we don't know that day. We don't know that time. And we definitely don't know that hour. So we better be prepared. We better we better be prayed up. We better be G'd up and girded up and everything else before when the Lord comes. And and, and that the, I want to say this one thing and I'm going to turn it back over to you, sis, is is, is that regardless to what happened and what you've experienced notice that the bible don't say when, when we that you're gonna have to stand before the lord and then you're gonna have to pull out everybody that hurt you and what they did and why you didn't do what you ended up doing the bible say no you're gonna have to give an account for everything that you've done in your body i'm gonna have to speak for me you're gonna have to speak for you and so that that means at the end of the day it's not that god didn't give you another opportunity to uh, uh find out who he was even if you went to a bad church or even if you encountered the wrong people that say that they was uh, a, a part of the body of christ you got 
to account for you. You're only responsible for how you respond. You can't dictate somebody else's response. You can't dictate somebody else's choices. But at the end of the day, you can control what you do. And so you can choose to either leave God because of that. And I think that, again, I tell you this. One of my favorite preachers say, come on back to Bible. Come on back to Bible. Because when you come on back to Bible, at the end of the day, it'll help you be able to see a crook when you see a crook in the pulpit. You know, the church got to be open. Where's where's the discernment? Pray for the spirit of discernment because that 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 will allow not only will that help you. Uh, be able to see what to be able to test the spirit and try the spirit by the spirit. But but that'll also help you and be your leading. The Bible said that when he gave us the Holy Ghost, it is to lead and guide us into all truth. So when you when you a Holy Ghost filled believer, we throw that around too loosely. But with the Holy Spirit will lead you into a, to a place where you can worship. Where, where it'll be exactly what you need to grow in the Lord so that you can do what God is calling for you to do. No excuses. No more excuses. Let it go. Amen. No more excuses because you account for you. So you, yeah, yeah, you can talk about who you hurt uh, or who hurt you, but what about who you hurt? We've offended people too, but we don't want to talk about that. You know, when, when, when we when we are the offender, we want people to give us grace. We want them to give us mercy and we want them to forget about it. But then when we the right. victim of the offense, then we want to hold on to it and, and, and make that and use that to justify our future actions or why we choosing to be a certain way towards people. And that's clearly hypocritical. That's all I got. Woo. Listen, <laughs> listen. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> listen, when I tell you, I, I pray that people are being blessed by this show because it really speaks to, um, it, it's so true. Like we will stand before him not your grandma, you know, not big mom, not your, your mom, not your pastor, not your spouse. We will stand before him on our own and we will have to give an account for what we've done in this body. And, you know, it's so God, I'm telling you all, if, if you hear anything that we're saying tonight, we recognize, listen, church hurt is real. Um, both of us have said that we've experienced it, but what we refuse to be is victims. We are victors in him. There's victory in God. And so whatever you go through, if we learn how to grow through it, there is triumph in going through anything that God has for us to go through. And I want to just bring these last two passages of scripture, because as I said, this is a very real topic. Some people have truly gone through some um, things that have, have shaken you. But here is the the beautiful thing about God. He won't keep you there. What if you pursue God even harder because of what happened to you in that ministry? What if you chased after him all the more so that you could really see what true love is? Does that you could really see what it means to follow someone who will never disappoint you, never hurt you, you know, never be betray you. What if we did that with God? And I want to share two passages of scriptures as, as we close out. Proverbs 19 and 11, and it says, good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is, it is his glory to overlook an offense. It is a glory that is connected to us not being so easily offended. It is, it is a blessing for us to be able not to be so quickly angered. Because if the enemy knows that he can get you through that, guess what he's going to do? He's going to continue to send those types of situations and those types of people in your life. But when you're talking about God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think, why are we just connecting that to material things? He's able to keep you from going off. He's able to keep you from staying in that place of offense. He's able to keep you from cutting people off. That is the miracles that I feel like we really overlook as it relates to this life. And then this last one I wanted to share is Psalms 62 and 5. And then I'm going to have Pastor Jared pray for those who find yourself um, having left and really are in need of a church home, really are in need of that direction and that connection um, with the body. Psalm 62 and 5, and it says, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. And so let's put our expectations in God 
because he will not disappoint. He will not fail. Yes, there will be, there were some times, you know, when you go into getting to that place where he will give you the desires of your heart, you know, if you delight in him, sometimes he's going to break our heart because it wasn't what we expected, right? But when you surrender and when you say, God, not my will, but yours be done, he's going to give you an expectation that's going to be fulfilled by him. And so, Pastor Jerry, if you can close us out, pray for our church, pray for those who have experienced this hurt, either on both sides. Pray that we will do the soul search, but that also we will get in position to follow God no matter what and find that place of worship. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we come right now, God, just lifting up your name. Thank you, Lord God, just for everything that's been said on here on tonight, Lord. Father, I pray right now, God, for that brother, that sister right now, Lord God, that have been a uh, experience, Lord God, a church hurt, Lord God. Father God, that have, Lord God, met people before they had a true encounter with you, Lord. I pray right now, Lord God, that you come into their lives right now, Lord, and let them know, Lord God, that you represented yourself perfectly, Lord God. Even if people, Lord God, they don't op they don't represent you, Lord God, the way that you do, Lord God. And so, Father, I just pray that you give them that true encounter with you, Lord. I pray right now for the broken heart, Lord God, that was taken advantage of, Lord. Father God, that you extend that love and that grace, Lord God, unto them, Lord God. Let them feel worthy. Let them know that you care. Let them know, Lord God, that they can cast their cares upon you, God, because you care for them, Lord God. Father, I pray right now for that one that's hesitant, Lord, that's, that, that's been staying away, Lord, that's been at bedside Baptist simply because they, they feel as if there's no church out there for them to go to or because they're scared or they're nervous, Lord God, of experiencing the same thing that they experienced before. Lord, I pray, God, that you give them an ear to hear your voice, Lord God. Make them sensitive to the Holy Spirit to be able to hear you, God, as they pray for your direction, God, to be led of which church you want them to go to, Lord God. Father God, I pray that you have them encounter, Lord God, true men and women of God, to let them know, Lord God, that there are people out here, God, that are living for truth, Lord God, that are not compromising on the truth, Lord God, that's not compromising in the lifestyle, that's not preaching one thing in the pulpit and living one thing, God, God elsewhere, God. But Father, I just pray right now, Lord God, that you help bring understanding, Lord. Father God, that you let the scales fall from their eyes, God, so that they'll be able to see the truth, Lord God, and to let them know, God, that everybody is not the same, Lord God, of what they've encountered, Lord God. Help them, God. Give them the ability, Lord God, to step beyond, God, what they have experienced, Lord God, and to walk by faith in you and trust in you, Lord God, that you are the one that will love on them like never before, that you will never give up on them, God, that you will never let them go, God, no matter what it is that they'll do, Lord God, because because your word declares that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Lord. So you died in the midst of knowing that we were imperfect. You died knowing that they would experience some church hurt and that would cause them to uh, deliberately rebel against you, Lord God. Because the, the truth be told, there are so many of us, God, that, that deliberately rebelled against you because of things that we've seen in the church and things that we've seen people who claim to be of you do that was wrong. And so we use that as an excuse and as ammunition to do what we wanted to do, Lord God. But I pray on tonight, Lord God, that the one really and understand, Lord God, the only thing that we're hurting is ourselves and we're breaking your heart, Lord God, because you're the one that desires for us to be with you and to fellowship with you and to sup with you like never before. So I pray, Lord God, for divine connection, God, for that man, that, 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 that woman on tonight, Lord, that's needing sisters and brothers, Lord God, because it's so important, Lord God, that we don't forsake uh, assembling ourselves with one another because that's how we be the strong and bear the infirmities of the weak, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, because in, in your, when we fellowship with one one another that's where we draw strength for one another so i pray yes. father god that the tactic of the enemy to divide and conquer your people lord god I, I cancel that assignment lord god i pray against it lord god that they really see what the enemy is trying to do by isolating them away god from your church lord god and away from you most importantly lord god so father i thank you now lord god i thank you god for even those that tuned in on tonight lord god that needed to hear this message on tonight lord that you lead and guide them lord god to the right people lord lead and guide them to the place where you want them to go, Lord, and ultimately, Lord God, that your will be done in their lives, Lord God. Every last one of them, Lord, bless them, touch them, and let them know, Lord God, that there's still hope, and let them know that most importantly, they got to give an account for what they do, Lord. And so, Father, help them to not become the thing that they hate, Lord God. So allow them, God, to take, they, they hurt, Lord God, and bring it before your feet, Lord, and allow you to heal them and make them whole so that they can be complete in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listening. Amen. Amen. Well, you all, 
This is A Beautiful Life. We have discussed on tonight, church hurt or hurt feelings to stay or not to. And so listen, if you are at a Bible-based sharing the unadulterated word of the Lord, don't you move one step. Do not get out of position. If that is where God is sending your raven, hey, he's going to give you the strength to stand. He's going to give you the strength to forgive. He's going to give you the strength to keep no record of wrong. And that's just the God that we serve. And so, Pastor Clark, I want to thank you so very much for just coming on tonight, sharing with us as the Lord and being transparent in your delivery. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Amen. Amen. And so without further ado, as we wrap up, remember that our beautiful life that we live is because of what he did on the cross. So here it is. I'm living a beautiful life. I'm making a beautiful life. I'm changing, rearranging. I see a beautiful day.